Um, actually, I had my second shot of uh, COVID vaccine uh, yesterday, so um, I'm really, uh, this morning I was feeling okay, but gradually um, I started developing fever and um, uh, fatigue, uh, extreme fatigue actually. So what I'll do is, I apologize, uh, like I originally planned it to be a two hour lecture. What I'll do is um, I will, uh, most of uh, all of these examples are actually um, already online. Okay, and I'll, uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll uh, give you the link. If you go to my playlist, there's um, uh, another, um, uh, uh, one playlist called uh, convex optimization um, and or constrained optimization and there you have uh, all these examples so um, I'll see how much I can do but this one is one that um, I don't have so I'll start with this one and then we'll see uh, I'll do a few of the other examples and uh, I'll see how much um, uh, I can do today and then we'll quit but at least you have the uh, uh, videos uh, to watch. Uh, so anyway, so uh, let's begin with the only example that uh, uh, is not there um, on YouTube already. You know, over determined systems, uh, a linear system, and uh, you have more equations than uh, uh, variables. And so, uh, we were looking for an approximate solution. Okay, so uh, this was what we had. Um, a was a tall matrix. So we had more equations, uh, linear equalities than uh, variables. Um, um, N is the number of variables or which is the, in terms of vectors and matrices, this is a N by N matrix. And this is a N by one vector X and B is M by one. And the solution is X equals a pseudo inverse, a pseudo inverse B, right? And so these are the dimensions of uh, uh, A, X, and B. And uh, the pseudo inverse of A uh, has the same uh, size as a transpose. So if A is an M by M matrix, then this its pseudo inverse is a N by M matrix. So and this is what we saw already when M was greater than N, uh, that is A was a tall matrix, then this was the X that we sought to minimize uh, uh, was, excuse me, the X uh, that we sought uh, was an approximate solution because no way we can actually satisfy A X equals B. So the X was the one that minimized the uh, L2 norm squared of the difference B minus AX. This was the sum squared error or the min norm solution. Now we look at the opposite case. So anyway, uh, a pseudo inverse is A transpose A inverse A transpose. We've already seen that. And A transpose A uh, assuming that rank of A is uh, N, the smaller of the two, M and N, uh, then A transpose A is invertible. And so this is the expression for the pseudo inverse. Now let's look at the opposite case where M is less than N. So A is a wide matrix. Okay, so X equals pseudo inverse of A times B is the exact solution. Actually, we have, since we have less number of equalities to satisfy and more number of variables, we have extra variables, right? So uh, we actually have so many, actually infinite solutions. There are multiple ways in which we can satisfy X, uh, find an X to satisfy this A X equals B, right? So what we want to do is we want to find the exact solution that minimizes the L2 norm squared of X. Okay, and there's a mathematical reason why we want to minimize uh, the, um, we want to find the solution, exact solution X with the 
minimum L2 norm. Okay. And here, the expression for the pseudo inverse is A pseudo inverse is, you see, there's a difference here. It's A transpose, A, A transpose inverse. And since rank of A is M, if we assume that, M is the smaller of the two now, uh, then A, A transpose is a uh, M by M matrix and it's invertible. Any questions? Okay, so we have a wide matrix A here, and this is what we want to solve. And the rank of A is M. How tall is A? Okay, and N is how wide is A? Since this is a wide matrix, N is more than M. Okay, and just like I said, multiple uh, X's can satisfy A X equals B. This would be the exact solution. And we choose the X that minimizes the square of the L2 norm of X. Okay, and so this becomes a constrained optimization problem. We want to find, we want to minimize, basically I just added a half. This is the L2 norm squared is nothing but X transpose X. So we want to minimize this subject to AX equals B. So this is a constrained optimization problem. It has a equality constraint, AX equals B. Are we good with this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, why do we minimize um, L2 norm of X squared? Okay. Now, uh, the Gaussian distribution is actually widely used because of some theoretical reasons. Um, it's a very common distribution. And so we assume that uh, the distribution of X uh, is Gaussian with mu equals to mean zero and covariance being the identity matrix. Okay. And so uh, what we mean by uh, the covariance uh, lambda being the identity matrix, it means that, uh, and mu being zero. So each xi, each component of x is independent of the other components, and they follow univariate Gaussian distributions around the origin, mu equals zero, and unit variance. This is a very uh, 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 logical or uh, mathematically justifiable assumption, okay? For reasons that I won't mention, but it is uh, a very justifiable assumption. Okay, so what we do is, so this is the distribution of the vector X. It's a Gaussian distribution or normal distribution with mean zero and uh, covariance uh, I. So the probability of X is given by this. Okay, this is the standard uh, multivariate Gaussian distribution in uh, n dimensions with these parameters, mu equals zero and uh, covariance i. Okay, uh, are you guys familiar with this? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the probability of x. Now we have an exponential here. And so what we, let's uh, take the log to simplify matters. So the log of the probability of X is negative half X transpose X. Since you have uh, two pi uh, to the N over two in the denominator. So uh, we have a negative sign here, N over two log of two pi. Now note that n over two log two pi or minus of that is a constant. It's just a constant, okay? It's independent of x. Only concentrate on this negative half x transpose x. Okay, and now what we want to do is, so different, since we have infinite solutions, ax equals b, we want to find the one which has the maximum probability, correct? So we want to find the solution x star, which is arg max with respect to uh, x of this p of x, the probability, subject to ax equals b. Okay, so this defines our optimization problem. 
and x star is the constraint optimum. So uh, it maximizes this probability subject to ax equals b. This condition has to be satisfied. Now, max instead of maximizing p of x, this is an odd max. So we're looking at the uh, x star odd max, not the maximum. Okay, so we are looking at x star. So instead of trying to maximize p of x, we can try, try to maximize its log, correct? Because we'll get the same x star. The maximum values will be different, but the odd maxes will be the same x star. So we want to minimize, let's minimize this odd max uh, of log of p of x because it's more convenient. Which is equal to, now let's plug in the value of log p of x. Negative half x transpose x minus this constant. And we want to find x which maximizes this. Which is equal to, now this second term here is a constant. So it's independent of x. So we can just drop it. So this becomes odd max of simply the first term, negative half x transpose x. And I can drop the half. So odd max of negative x transpose x. Okay, now we have a negative sign maximizing negative x transpose x is the same as minimizing x transpose x, right? So this is equal to the same x star equals odd min uh, with respect to x of ax uh, subject to ax equals b of x transpose x, which is basically the L2 norm squared, right? So this defines our constraint optimization problem for underdetermined systems. So now let's try to find the constraint optimum x star. So we want to find this x star equals argmin uh, with respect to x of absolute better or L2 norm of x squared subject to ax equals b. So this is the constraint optimization problem. We want to, this is argmin, excuse me. Uh, did I say argmax? I meant argmin. Because this is argmin, argmax, uh, we took out the negative sign, so it became an argmin. And so this is our optimization problem. Minimize half x transpose x subject to ax equals b. So the Lagrangian, since we have an equality constraint, uh, we use a uh, mu, uh, which can have plus or minus sign. It has uh, no restrictions like the lambda for inequality constraints. So we, this is the Lagrangian, half x transpose x plus mu transpose ax minus b, because ax minus b should be equal to zero if we reduce this to the standard form that we used. And mu is an m-dimensional vector because we have m constraints, okay? And differentiating the Lagrangian with respect to x, what's the derivative of half x transpose x? x. And the derivative of mu transpose ax is a transpose mu. Uh, mu transpose a is a uh, row vector, right? Uh, so the row vector, uh, remember the derivative of p transpose x is p. Here, instead of p, we have mu transpose a. Or, excuse me, instead of p transpose, we have mu transpose a. So we take its transpose we get a transpose mu. So this is the uh, derivative, first derivative of uh, the Lagrangian. And the second derivative is, this is independent of x. So differentiating the um, x with respect to x, basically we get the identity matrix. This is the Hessian 
This is the gradient and this is the Hessian del squared L of X mu. Okay. So uh, this is what we have. Uh, the gradient is X plus A transpose mu. And this is how it looks like. Um, I have this A and A transpose. So when we multiply A with A transpose, we get a small uh, matrix like this, and uh, this is invertible. Okay, at the minimum, we must have this. What are the conditions? The gradient, the first derivative must be equal to zero. And the second derivative, the Hessian must be positive definite. Okay, then this guarantees that uh, the solution when we solve these, the solution would be uh, the global minimum because you can notice that X transpose X is a uh, convex uh, function. Okay, uh, so uh, th th these are the sufficient conditions for the minimum. So let's try to solve it. So let x star mu star be the solution. We equate um, the derivative of uh, the Lagrangian to zero. So x star plus a transpose mu star equals zero. And solving, we get x star equals negative a transpose mu star. OK, so this gives us a relationship between the primal variable x and the dual variable mu at the uh, optimum, at the constrained optimum. Now we should satisfy a x star equals b, which means that a and then replacing x star with this negative uh, a transpose mu star we get this expression, negative A, A transpose mu star equals B. Whence, solving for this, since A, A transpose is invertible, we have mu star equals negative A, A transpose inverse B. So this is mu star. How do we get X star, the solution that we're looking for? Simply again reuse this same equation here x star equals negative a transpose mu and then uh, mu star and then replacing mu star with this expression we get this mu star equals this so this is equal to a transpose a a transpose inverse b that's the solution that we are looking for, x star. Now, the second derivative is equal to the uh, identity matrix, and uh, therefore it is always positive definite. So both these conditions are satisfied. So this is how we approach the underdetermined system. So we are we are given a x equals b, and uh, um, a is a wide matrix, M is less than N, M is less than N. And so uh, what we do is, so this is what I just showed you. And this is the uh, solution that we're looking for. Uh, there are infinite number of solutions. We want to find the X, which satisfies A X equals B, which has the minimum L2 norm squared. So, our solution, as we just derived, is x transpose, excuse me, x star <laughs> equals a pseudo inverse b, where a pseudo inverse is given by this expression. a transpose, uh, a, a transpose whole inverse. And so a, a times a pseudo inverse equals this. Just plug in the value. Uh, of uh, a uh, pseudo inverse with this expression here, and you get this. What the, What is this? A transpose A 
times A transpose A inverse. It's the identity matrix, right? So A, A transpose equals the identity matrix. Okay. And always remember that A pseudo inverse, I again said A uh, transpose here, A times A pseudo inverse is the identity matrix, but A pseudo inverse times A is not equal to a large identity matrix because this won't be of full rank. The rank of A pseudo inverse A won't be equal to M. Uh, sorry, M. Dr. Das, how the A, A pseudo inverse, how the A transpose A got switched? Because these are two different equations. One for uh, when you have a tall matrix, Oh, yeah, this one's for the for the wide matrix. Wide matrix, yeah. Okay. okay, so that's the only difference. And so what happens when both are equal? M equals M. You can use either expression and they'll both be equal to A inverse. Okay. So this is how we solve the um, underdetermined system. And uh, we have a different expression for the pseudo inverse of A. Any other question? Okay, so now I'll, I'll uh, look at the next most important uh, problem to solve. Okay, and then uh, example two, now let's go to example. I've planned a whole lot of things. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, this is, an, uh, this is an example of how to uh, uh, solve uh, a constraint optimization problem. In this case, we actually have inequality constraints. So we want to max, excuse me. We want to maximize f of x, y, two scalars uh, equals x square y subject to, these are our two constraints. x plus y should be less than equal to nine and twice x plus y should be less than equal to 12. Subject to these conditions, we want to maximize x square y. This is the optimization problem. Now, I have two inequality constraints. So what I'm doing is, um, since it's a maximization problem, I'm using negative signs here. Okay, otherwise I could have just um, taken the negative here and uh, use plus and plus here. I could have placed the negative here, minimize negative x squared y, same thing. and since these are uh, Lagrange multipliers, this alpha and beta are Lagrange multipliers corresponding to inequality constraints. So alpha and beta must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And now let's uh, kick in the KKT conditions. The complementary slackness condition says that either alpha equals zero or x plus y minus nine equals zero. If x plus y less than or equal to nine, if this is an active constraint, then x plus y should be exactly equal to nine, in which case the Lagrange multiplier alpha will be greater than zero, strictly greater than zero. Otherwise, if this is an inactive constraint, then alpha will be equal to zero. That's what the complementary slackness condition means. And likewise, for this is the, uh, uh, a Lagrangian term corresponding to the second inequality, uh, twice x plus y minus 12 should be less than or equal to zero. And so this is the complementary slackness of this uh, inequality, other inequality. And stationary conditions imply that taking the derivative with respect to x and with respect to y the Lagrangian, the derivative of the Lagrangian, 
uh, with respect to x and y must be equal to zero. So differentiating the Lagrangian with respect to x, we have twice xy minus alpha and then minus twice beta equals zero. And likewise, differentiating with respect to y, we get x squared minus alpha and then minus beta equals zero. Okay. So twice xy from this, uh, we get twice xy equals alpha plus twice beta and x squared equals alpha plus beta. And so these two uh, stationary conditions uh, I simplified in this form and these are the complementary slackness conditions. Okay, so remember the complementary slackness conditions. If alpha equals zero, then x plus y minus nine is le strictly less than zero. If x plus y minus nine equals zero, then alpha is strictly greater than zero. Okay, one of them must be zero. The other one must be non-zero and likewise for beta. Either beta is zero or twice x plus y minus 12 is zero. So we have four situations here. When you have inequality constraints, you have to divide uh, uh, all the, you have to examine all the different cases separately. What if alpha equals zero and beta greater than zero? What does this mean? If alpha equals zero, then from the complementary slackness condition, what do you get? X plus Y minus nine must be strictly less than zero, right? What do you mean? What happens when beta is greater than zero, strictly greater than zero? That means this is equal to zero. If beta is strictly greater than zero, then this is equal to zero, right? Twice x plus y minus 12. This is from the complementary slackness conditions. And we, so since alpha equals zero, twice xy equals twice beta or xy equals beta and x square equals beta. And this must be equal to zero. Twice x plus y equals 12. Okay, so how many variables do we have? to solve x, y, and beta, right? We have three variables and three equations. So we can solve it, okay? And so the solution is twice x plus y equals beta. So x square equals beta, x, y equals beta. So x equals y, right? x equals y. So which means that twice x plus y um, is the same as thrice x, three times x equals 12, or which is the same thing as three times y equals 12. So we get x equals y equals four. What's the value of beta? x, y, right, 16. Okay, so, and f of x, y, when x and y are four, f of x, y equals 64. Okay, um, this was the objective function. Now let's examine case two. Here, now we consider the opposite situation where alpha is greater than zero and beta is equal to zero. What does this mean? If alpha is greater than zero, from complementary slackness, what do we get? X plus Y minus nine equals zero or X plus Y equals nine, correct? And since beta equals zero, twice X, Y equals alpha and X square equals alpha. So twice X, Y equals alpha, X square equals alpha and uh, X plus Y equals nine. Again, we have three variables, this time X, Y and alpha we know that beta is equal to zero. Solving, we get x equals six, y equals three. 
Now, we need to verify that the uh, primal uh, uh, conditions and uh, primal feasibility and dual feasibility are satisfied. So what's the value of alpha? Well, it's uh, x squared, so 36, right? That's fine. But how about this? Uh, this other uh, feasibility condition, is this condition being satisfied? No. Right, y is x plus y minus 12 must be less than equal to 12, but we get y is x plus y equals 15. Reject. So this, we reject. This is being violated. This constraint is violated. Next, we look at case three and case four. What the other uh, cases? when both alpha and beta are equal to zero, and when both alpha and beta are strictly greater than zero. These are the other two remaining cases. So let's examine the case when both alpha and beta are strictly greater than zero, which means that these are both active constraints, right? From uh, the uh, complement extractions conditions, these are both active constraints. So x plus y equals nine and twice x plus y equals 12. Solving, we get x equals three, y equals six. F x, y equals 54. So this is our third candidate. Okay, now, uh, how are both greater than zero? I somehow uh, didn't do that, but when both are greater than zero, you, uh, sorry, when both are equal to zero, both are equal to zero, you can straight find the uh, maximum of x square y subject to uh, these conditions. I didn't do that, but uh, we pick this as the final solution because it was a maximization problem. So f of x, y equals 64. Somehow I didn't do the fourth case when both alpha and beta are equal to zero. You can try it out separately. Okay, now this is, ah, I actually wanted to do this one. Uh, Let's do uh, this example next, example four. Now, this is a practical problem. Okay, I devised it actually. Um, so this is um, a loaf, a cross section of a loaf of bread. Okay, and what the, uh, somehow uh, the, uh, the perimeter is uh, this b plus twice h plus pi over two b and uh, suppose we want to maximize the uh, size the how much is brown okay then we have to maximize this perimeter this is a square uh, a rectangle um, so this area is this perimeter is h plus b and then this is a half circle so it's uh, its perimeter is h plus b, and this perimeter is uh, h plus pi over two. Uh, oh, no, 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 b plus two h, 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 and b, b plus two h, and this pi over two b is this perimeter here. The diameter of this half circle is b, and so uh, pi over two b, this is the perimeter but we have a fixed volume. If the length is fixed, then the area, which is HB, the area of this rectangle times the area of this half circle is, uh, excuse me, plus the area of this half circle is pi over eight B squared. So the total area is BH plus pi over eight B squared. So we must maintain this constant, this is, given, the area is given. Once the length is given, if the volume, the amount of dough is area times length. Uh, if the length is fixed, then the area is fixed, okay? But we want to find the dimensions B and H. So this is our 
optimization problem. And common sense dictates that H and B must be positive. You cannot have a negative height or a negative width. So this is our constraint optimization problem. Okay, I could have introduced H is greater than or equal to zero and H is strictly greater than zero and B strictly greater than uh, zero as two constraints, but I choose to simplify the problem because I know from common sense that any solution that I will get will have H and B positive. So this is the Lagrangian. Again, I'm using negative here. This is an equality constraint, so no restrictions on mu. It can have either sign, but I'm using a negative here because it's a maximization problem. So B plus twice H plus pi over two B minus mu of B H plus pi over eight B squared minus A. This is an inequality constraint. Uh, I'm sorry, this is an equality constraint, right? The previous example was an inequality constraint. Now we differentiate uh, this Lagrangian with respect to H uh, and B. So with respect to H, uh, when we differentiate this, we get two, this becomes zero, minus mu B. So two minus mu B equals zero which means that mu b equals two. Differentiating with respect to b, what should we get? One plus pi over two minus mu h plus pi over four b times minus mu again, right? So one plus pi over two negative mu h negative mu uh, derivative of this with respect to b is pi over 4b. And so with this negative mu, we get this term. So this equals 0. Okay. So mu b is equal to 2. Putting the value of mu b here, so pi over 4 times 2, right? So this term is pi over two with a negative sign, and we already have a pi over two here, correct? So th this pi over two and negative pi over four mu b cancel out. Are you guys with me? Yes. Yes. So yes. one neg minus mu h equals zero or mu h equals one. So mu b equals two, mu h equals one. Okay, and what does this mean? It means that you see the ratio between the breadth and the height is two is to one. So this, it should be like a um, wide matrix, right? B equals twice H. We already get that relationship here. B equals twice H. And so what are the exact values? Since A is a constant, so we have this twice H squared plus pi over two h squared b equals twice h, right? So this is equal to a solving, we get h is this. This is a quadratic equation. We get the value of h and the value of b. Okay. So this is a problem uh, with an equality constraint and the previous one had an inequality constraint. Now this example, uh, uh, I strongly suggest that you go through it from the videos. Um, what I'll do next is, this is an example where I have a graphical illustration. Okay, I strongly suggest that you read through this. This is the global optimum. This is the unconstrained uh, minimum. This is the constrained minimum and these two are, um, this and this, this is infeasible. This is the infeasible region, the gray region. This is, you'll see it violates the KKT conditions, this solution. And this solution uh, is uh, further away from the global uh, minimum, right? So this uh, yields a uh, higher value of the function than this one. And so we pick this. 
Uh, excuse me, Dr. Das, is this um, presentation slides on Canvas? It's on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. The presentation slides are on Canvas. Okay, yeah. But the videos um, I have independently without interruption. And uh, so I have, uh, it's actually cleaner. Um, I'll urge you guys to uh, go through the YouTube videos. Right. Now, uh, so here I am examining all four uh, possibilities. I have two inequality constraints. And so we have two, uh, two times two, four. So we have four possible cases. Okay. And so uh, I'm an, uh, here I'm examining all four cases. And graphically, these correspond to these four problems, these four points. Okay, so uh, I'm actually, now let's look at dual functions. Okay, how to find the dual. Uh, oh, this is inequality constraint. So, uh, this is example two. Now, this is how to obtain the dual. Okay, so we want to minimize fx equals x squared plus one subject to x squared minus six x plus eight is less than or equal to zero. This is the standard format. We want to minimize and we have something less than or equal to zero. So this is the primal problem. Okay, now, we want to find the corresponding dual. So this is the Lagrangian. X squared plus one minus lambda. Mm. Why did I take a negative here? Don't remember, I should have taken a plus here. But anyway, um, there's a sign issue. Um, x squared plus one negative lambda x squared minus six x plus eight. That's the Lagrangian. And then uh, I group the terms containing x squared here. So one plus lambda x squared. Oh, it's a, just a typo. It should be plus. It's one plus lambda x squared. And just pretend this is a plus sign, okay? So uh, lambda times negative six x, negative six lambda x, and then lambda times eight, and then plus one. Okay, this is the quadratic term, one plus lambda x squared, then we have negative six lambda x, and this is the constant term, eight lambda plus one. Um, so now let's, this is the Lagrangian. Okay, so here I have written the Lagrangian again. So again, this is, a, is this a plus? No, this is fine. This is the Lagrangian. And theta d, what do we do for theta d? We try to minimize this with respect to the primal. So it becomes a function of only the dual variables, right? So theta d lambda equals minimum of this expression. So since we know that lambda is greater than zero, so this is a uh, parabola, right? But it's convex, so it has a uh, unique minimum. And we, how do we find that unique minimum? By simply taking the derivative and equating it to zero. So, or alternately, uh, differentiate, uh, this is the stationary condition. The derivative must be equal to zero. So either way, let's differentiate this. Uh, sorry, um, derivative is equal to twice x, one plus lambda minus six lambda. Okay, again, another type of here. So solving, we get x equals three lambda over one plus lambda. Sorry for this typo, okay? 
make a note of it. This should be uh, Okay, this is what it should be. Um, and uh, so solving, we get the value of x in terms of lambda. It's such a huge presentation, so it takes some time to. Uh, slide show it, uh, current slide. Okay, so this is x equals three lambda over one plus lambda. Okay, and so we replace uh, in the Lagrangian, we got the value of x in terms of lambda and so x square, whatever it is, and then replace the values of x with this three lambda over one plus lambda. So that gives us theta e lambda equals this negative lambda square over one plus lambda plus eight lambda plus one. Okay, and remember that uh, minimizing with respect to X means maximizing with respect to lambda, right? So the dual problem, so this is X. We can solve the dual and uh, find the value of lambda. And then using this expression, we can get the value of X, the optimal solution. So this is theta D. So, and since it was the primal problem in the minimization, now we have to maximize the respect to lambda. So this is the dual problem and subject to lambda must be greater than or equal to zero. This is the dual problem and this was the primal problem, which is easier to solve. The dual pro dual probably is easy to solve, right? So we can just, I don't know. Yeah, I think the dual is easy to solve. Okay, and once you get lambda, you can find X like this. Can we end? Uh, no, because uh, I took some, Fever reducing medicine, um, I took both Tylenol and ibuprofen, but it's not reducing my fatigue. Any questions? No. Okay. No. Uh, uh, distance students, are you guys okay? Yeah. Okay, so. This is all there, uh, both the uh, PowerPoint uh, slides and uh, the uh, PDF. Uh, you can download either one and I'll show you the website. So um, this is uh, what I have on YouTube. Okay. and. So two solved examples. So it gives a quick review followed by, uh, so we have uh, two examples here, two solved examples. And then primal form, dual form, uh, we've gone, gone through that. Another, this is the important one with the geometric uh, interpretation. Okay, so this was the one that I was talking about. Also, R shows a subjective function f of x1, x2 equals x1 minus t squared. And uh, then we have maximum entropy method. This is also, uh, uh, you should look at this one. A is equal to summation alpha pi 
and then solved examples, two solved examples on duality. The, I, the second one we already did. Okay, this is the example that uh, we just did. And that's the first example you can go through. This is the dual problem. This was the original problem. And this relationship uh, establishes the connection between the primal variable and the dual variable. So you see, uh, it's already there. Okay, and actually, uh, to be honest, these uh, slides, since I have uh, recorded this uh, during my own uh, private time, uh, there are less mistakes. Okay, uh, it's uh, well edited, so uh, you can go through these. Uh, to, so this um, basically uh, covers uh, the first five lectures, V1 through V5 minus the um, pseudo inverse example. Okay. So any questions or shall we quit today? I'm, I really apologize. I wanted to go all the way, uh, do all the examples, but uh, not possible, not feasible. Yeah, that's okay. Hope you get well soon, Dr. Das. Thank you so much. Well, it's just a couple of days. Well, I know it's a good thing, actually. It means that my immune system is uh, activated. It's actually a good thing if you feel uh, feverish and uh, fatigue and all that. That means your, your vaccine is working well. It's a confirmation. It's actually good news for me. But I think it'll last for a couple of days. And so Friday, I'll be in this post. Saturday, I think I should be okay. Uh, yes, Dr. Das, I just want to one information. Which vaccine is this? Because we have also scheduled the second on 10th. And, uh, Moderna. Hello? Moderna. Okay, okay. So we have also taken the first dose and the second is due on 10th. So, no, uh, for younger people, um, somehow uh, it doesn't, uh, you don't feel uh, these symptoms. Most of uh, you guys, it's more common for older people. Okay. So you probably won't feel a thing, but good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And get it, actually, it's, it's a good thing if you feel that, if you have uh, those symptoms, then okay. it's actually a good thing. It's a confirmation that uh, your uh, immunity is kicking in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Das, one more thing. I Last time I was uh, searching on YouTube, your channel, but I couldn't find it for some reason. I'm not sure if I uh, typed doing things correctly, but can you share this link with us for this channel? I, it's there. Uh, the links are, well, if you go uh, to my um, other recording, so this is my, uh, all my videos, right? So this is my, yeah. uh, what do you call it? A website or whatever. And then playlists. So you, you have access to these videos, right? B6, B4, these, right? And so just go to playlists and then you have a whole bunch of things. And this is the first one is constraint optimization. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Das, I just okay. also searched, but I can't find the channel. I just want the link for that channel. Is it on uh, Canvas available? Yeah, it is on Canvas too. Oh. Convexity theory. Yeah, okay. View. They're shorter than uh, the lectures because I don't make mistakes and all that. Uh, especially today, I made several mistakes when I was lecturing. But 
these are well edited. And so they'll be a little shorter to same stuff. Okay. Yes, that's all. Okay. See you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. And good luck with your uh, vaccine. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bay. Yes. Yeah. Bye bye.